The Purple Horde has officially assembled. All of the Purple Tribes and their leaders joining under the Purple Horde. They have nearly 1,000 soldiers being fielded and a few light tanks they were able to muster up. Sir, I'm here from the scouting report. All right, Private, let me hear it. Well, Commander Barr, it looks as though Sergeant Violet has gone and assembled the Purple Horde after our defeat. I knew we should have killed him when we had the chance. Those greens letting him go was a mistake. Speaking of which, are the greens coming to assist us? No, sir. Their retreat lines were ambushed. Their army is in absolute shambles. We are on our own. Well, at least we've got the Pegasus Bridge. Look, it's the only bridge that will allow them into the Blue Isles. We hold here. Order our tanks to blockade the bridge. If they get destroyed, it will make crossing it ten times more difficult. Bring our artillery to the front lines. It's gonna be risky, but we need to optimize their accuracy. Try and kill as many as possible. And line the trenches with as much infantry as we can muster. I believe our current report at the bridge is 125. We're outnumbered almost 10 to 1. But focus our machine guns at the bridge crossing. If we hold the bridge, we keep them off the aisles. Make it as hard as possible for them to cross. The Purple Horde is deadly, but Blue Ingenuity will prevail. Alrighty then, boys, we are back with another episode of the Army Men Unifying War, looking at the blue and purple front currently, where the Purple Horde has finally assembled. They have a thousand soldiers, along with four light vehicles, because they're not very good at fielding vehicles. They have very poor production. However, they were able to scrap a few light vehicles for the Horde, but the Horde themselves is a thousand strong, which makes them extremely deadly they can ball up and just punch through so the blues need to keep the pegasus bridge defended as well as possible and that's why they're employing various strategies with machine guns artillery and tanks to hold out they might be small but their tactical prowess is unmatched so guys, if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. It really does help me out a ton in the YouTube algorithm if you guys do hit like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below what you think should happen to the Blues after this battle, depending on what happens in this battle. Alright, let's get it. Alrighty then, boys, we're starting off in slow-mo here and pressing start as the Purple Horde begins to come forward against the Blue defenses here. Already... Tons of shots being fired out from both sides. Blue Comet takes a shot to the face, but I see its turret moving, so it is still alive right there. But this purple vehicle does end up going down almost immediately. Now, the purple horde, of course, not the most technologically advanced, but they're able to field crazy amounts of radical soldiers all at once. So that is one of their main superpowers there. The blues, of course, have a technological and strategic advantage that they are able to use against the enemy. So hence the pretty expert bridge defense here, uh, as well as, uh, you know, having a little bit better tanks than the purples. Although, these purple tanks, oh, oh, the crew is on fire and getting out of that one. Yikes. These purple tanks can definitely go and kill blue tanks, that's for sure. But, they need to go around the side and hit their engines. I don't think front-facing shots will kill those at all. Oh! The purples, they take out part of the tower on the opposite end of the bridge. This guy is still firing his machine gun as his comrade plummets to the ground, and then he goes as well as a second shot strikes the tower right there, and he goes down into the water below. Yikes. Okay, dude. Uh, so like I was saying, those purple tanks should be able to still kill these comets, but they're going to need to get a really good shot off on them because their front armor is very, very powerful. But they are coming through the flanks over this way, the purples that is, uh, so they will probably be able to get some glancing shots on those flanks. And they're coming around this way too with this guy, although he got tracked. We can go ahead and do the repair rule right off the bat here and get that thing repaired so it can continue to push forward for the purples. Um, as for the retreat rule for the blues, anyone on this side of the bridge, honestly, I think if we tried to run them across the bridge, they'd just get shot in the back and die. So we're going to leave them here to do their last stand and attempt to get some more kills because that's what this is all about, is killing as many purples as they possibly can so that the guys on the other side of the bridge might still be able to make it. That's the big deal here. That's what we want to see. And there's still some Piots left alive like this guy here. He pops up with it. Is he going to take a shot? He takes a shot and he gets back down. Beautiful. Hits the little ambulance here. That might be a war crime, but we'll ignore it for now. A red mist explodes as a bazooka or Piot shot strikes this building and kills 
probably all the occupants that the purples had inside of it, as well as some residual shots hitting these guys back here and killing them. My god! Purple tank over here gets struck. Excuse me, struck. I like choked on my word right there. Um, my goodness. Uh, the artillery is firing out. You can see its shells on the ground right there. Um, but it's probably taking aim yet again. How many kills you got? It's got 30 kills already, this one. This one only has three. So big difference right there. But 30 kills in the grand scheme of things is great. However, that's what? 3% of the total force that they're going up against here of a thousand purples. There's still so many purples left alive right now. It is astonishing, especially after all of this fighting and all the hard work the purples have put into it. The bridge begins to crumble here as the blue plan seems to be working out. They're making this bridge basically inoperable as the purples attempt to destroy the blue tanks on top of it. Now, even if the bridge does get destroyed, infantry will still be able to cross it, but the debris will likely stop the purple tanks from crossing themselves. So, that's a pretty big deal for the blues right there uh, to have happen. That will not be bad in the slightest. That'll be very, very cool. All right, blue troops over here in these trenches are starting to die out a little bit. They're getting hit pretty hard by some by some fire. I'm seeing a number of them undercover, not wanting to pop up, while others are a bit more brave and are just spamming shots out at the purples across the way here. Uh, and the purples are still taking monstrous losses. Let's actually take a look at the losses currently. Uh, so up at the mini map, the blues are the blues, <laughs> and the reds are the purples at the top left here. As you can see, there's still tons of purples left alive um and all right that is a lot of dead purples that is a ton of dead purples hundreds of dead purples for sure but the blues have also taken some significant losses i'd say probably half the blue force is dead at this point and it looks like this blue tank here did get destroyed probably unrepairable this one here does have some damage but its front guns are still working so i'm not going to do the repair rule because if we take troopers out of that tank they will die there's no point in repairing it because they will die and it is taking more shots it's probably getting concussed and it is a really really bad situation to be in for that tank however if they do end up dying out they still get that nice roadblock effect that they're going for more red mist as another artillery strike destroys a large portion of the purple horde right there well shot right there uh some bazooka or that honestly might have been a tank shot blows up a portion of this building killing the occupants uh that the purples had within absolutely insane uh either way while this battle is getting fought right now i did want to give a shout out to my boy odog uh over on the discord he has been uh chatting people up about the army men mod left and right and i have to say it is really really fun to talk to him about it um and so i recommend if you guys want to talk more in depth about the army men lore talk about statistics talk about tactics the politics of the army men universe and stuff like that uh the discord channel is a really great place to do it and uh uh, thank you to Odog for engaging the community in such a way. My cat is about to walk on my keyboard. No, he avoided it like an absolute Giga Chad. Well done! And a massive bazooka shot takes out a purple light tank just like that. Wow! Okay. So, kind of like we thought, the purple tanks aren't going to be all that effective in this battle. It really is up to their infantry here. And they've still got a crap ton of infantry available to them. Uh, I don't think we really need to do the squad up rule yet because they are very much so. My cat is now moving my mouse and biting my hand. My guy. Uh, yeah, the uh, they're still very much so attacking, so I, I think we're okay. I, I don't think we need to squad them up or anything like that yet. I don't think we need to really retreat the blues or, you know, enact really any repairs. Um, oh, did this other tank go down too? No, it's still alive! It's only got 19 kills. So again, in the grand scheme of things, uh, not doing all that great. Uh, it's the infantry, I think, for the blues that is doing very, very well. This guy's got four kills here. Uh, this guy's got none. This guy's got none. <laughs> okay, this guy's got none. <laughs> this guy's got none. Wow. All right, not very impressive. Who's getting all the kills? This guy's got 18. That's pretty impressive. This has 44 kills. That's pretty darn good. Um, I don't know. Let's see. This guy's got eight. That's pretty good. This guy's got four. Oh, wait. This guy's four chevron. Six kills and a, and a tank kill. That's pretty big. This guy's got none. This guy's got none. This guy's got one. This guy's got three. You have to remember, a lot of these guys over here probably had ten or so kills, and they're dead now, so rip, rip, potato, chip. Um, but yeah, a lot of the Piat guys over here got some crazy kills at the start of the battle, so they probably um, had some pretty good statistics. This guy's got 22. That's pretty crazy. So yeah, I mean, this guy's got eight. 
This only has seven kills. Okay, so I mean, yeah, probably the blues that did all the heroics are dead now. <laughs> I hate to say it, um, but now it's next in line can start doing more heroics because like the number of dead soldiers for the purples is absolutely staggering over here. And they still have a lot of soldiers left alive as well. So still an absolute ton going on. Oh, my cat finally dropped to the ground. All right, <laughs> he's no longer gonna be biting my fingers while we uh, fight this fight here. Look at this, beautiful bunker shot right here. Double MGs firing away at the purples on the opposite side of the battlefield. Absolutely beautiful. You have to remember, the blues and the greens, even if the purples win this battle, they are still very much so going to be on the defensive. It does look to me like the purples might be able to secure the victory here. Um, even outnumbered 10 to 1, it, that'd be very, very impressive. Uh, but if they lose, the blues and the greens are double screwed. They are in for a very, very bad time. If they win, even still, the greens just got decimated. The greens are going to be on the defensive, and I don't think the blues are going to be fielding much of an army after this battle, uh, even if they do win. And they, they were very reliant on their ally of the greens for manpower as well. Uh, so the blues winning this is a great thing because they stop the blue isles from getting attacked. Uh, but the greens are still in horrible peril. And uh, the blues will just basically have an opportunity to reinforce all of their strongholds and stuff like that. Uh, to prevent another really, really disastrous defense like this one is right now. Uh, so, you know, while it will be a victory in the grand scheme of the war, the blues and greens are still doing absolutely horrid. They're doing horrible, man. So it's going to be taking a lot uh, to manage to actually get a get a solid foothold on this war after losing like four or five battles in a row. Um, either way, tons of bazooka troopers over here just spamming fire at the purples. Kind of a beautiful sight to see right there. Uh, but why don't we do a little time lapse here as the purples and blues are just in constant warfare at the moment. Okay, so two minutes have passed, and essentially the purples have come to the edge of the shoreline now. And this could be the comeback that they've been looking for. At this point, it seemed like a blue victory to me, but they finally wiped out the leftmost trench. The right side for the blues still has a pretty devastating lineup of troopers, especially these bazooka troopers just constantly bombarding the purple soldiers. Uh, but now as the purples are actually approaching here, and again, I think they can still cross the bridge. I think technically they should still be able to. Uh, they've slowly whittled down the blues. The blues started really strong um, and they've kept going for quite a while here, but they're kind of exhausting their options. Uh, we can do the reman rule for the blue um, stuff here. And as we do that, we'll also check to see if we can do repair rule for any tanks. And yes, the purple tank right there needs repairs. And this one right here needs repairs. So we'll do that for them. Um, but beyond that, should we retreat any blues? These guys here, I would normally say yes, but at the moment, they're still clapping cheeks and taking names, so I'm gonna leave them where they are. Um, maybe we retreat these guys back just a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll do the retreat rule for them. Uh, maybe for this guy too, just because they're probably gonna die without doing anything. And then all these soldiers in this trench here, I will retreat them back to their back lines as well. There we go. A little bit of retreat rule going on. This needs repair, so we'll do repair rule on that. And this, apparently the soldiers trying to reman it died, so I think that thing is now going to just be done. Uh, and these soldiers who I tried to re retreat died as well. Um, so that's sad, but uh, at least we got some of the guys back here, which is good, and, and hopefully they'll be able to do their last stand over here. These guys, weirdly, are over here. Um, we'll bring them back up this way. Okay. Uh, do we need to squat up the purples? I don't think so. They're kind of moving, so I, I think we're good on the rules for right now. Let's bump it up to normal speed, though, and see how this goes. So, continued shots coming in from the blues, but it is looking really, really bad for them. Uh, the purples at the moment, uh, yeah, see how they're, like, getting on the bridge, even though it's technically destroyed? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but of course, they're not going to be able to bring their tanks over, which is big reason why this blockade was put into place and they're going to trickle in because of those troopers there too so that'll be pretty big for the blues right there to not have to deal with a giant force coming forward uh because the purples have to just go one by one through the blue tanks right there uh, or they can go up around the stairs somehow i don't know how he managed that but it's pretty impressive 
The purples now are not messing around. They are just piot shotting the crap out of the blues in this trench here. And mortar shelling with those piots across the way here too. Oh, the blues might be in big trouble. I would say we still have like maybe 300 or so purple soldiers left alive. Um, a few of them dying here, but the blues, they've kind of lost all their big tricks. It's going to be up to pure blue might at this point, and it seems like we might get another defeat here. And the purples will likely make it onto the blue isles due to this, uh, which the blue isles are going to be really fun. Think island hopping, that sort of a thing, with like coastal fortresses and stuff like that. Just really hard positions to take uh, is what we're going to be going for. But that's the blue territory, man. The blue kingdom completely invaded at that point, uh, which which is not going to be good. So the purples, after taking some pretty bad losses at the start of this entire thing, are now all of a sudden on the come up because of their alliance with the reds and tans. Nice grenade. We like to see grenades being used. That's going to blow those guys back. Not getting any kills, but it is strategically pretty nice. More bazooka shots and piot shots going out here. Getting some kills way back here. That's kind of funny. I think it was a miss, but so many purples, it still hit. All right, purples coming in uh, this side. Just, again, still so many explosions coming out from both sides right now. Uh, blues are doing their last stand. They're doing it well, and they're getting kills. That's all we want to see right now is the blues continuing to whittle down uh, the purple horde. I don't know if they're going to survive this terrible grenade. You threw it at your own soldiers. You just dislodged your own defense. Oh my god, what an idiot. That just allowed the purples in. Oh, that guy's so dumb. That guy is so unbelievably dumb. All right, well, blues still doing it. Still getting kills. They're making it happen a little bit. They still got this trench line back here. They've still got a couple soldiers over this way too, which is good. Piot soldiers nonetheless. Very nice. Good shots going out there. Opening up some of these defenses. Their own defenses having to get it opened up right now. Oh my god. <laughs> Purple Horde taking extreme losses for every blue soldier that they kill. I mean, that's been going on the entire battle though. The blue strategy here really was great. Even though, you know, they're... They're going up a huge against a huge horde. They have killed so many of them. They have done an impeccable job during this defense, I have to say. This poor guy is just out in limbo there because of all the grenades being thrown. No idea what he's doing. It's just rough right now to be a blue. These guys die. There's one alive there. The trench is back here, though, still alive. Could still profit a little bit here against the purples. Um, oh, no. They're grenading it. Oh, that's the best thing the purples could have done. That was really smart, honestly. Really, really intelligent move right there. Dislodge them. Blow open a hole in their cover while they're dislodged. Another grenade. For once, the AI is being really, really intelligent with their tactics. For once. Unluckily enough for the blues. Very unlucky for the blues that the AI is being smart. Right, that grenade sucked, though. That's good. This guy's reloading his M16. Start firing into him. Don't let them reload. Don't let them reload. Get those Piat soldiers down. Oh, they let them reload. Yikes. We have one single blue soldier left alive here. I'm going to I'm gonna ramble him. Let's see. No one's in our line of sight yet. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I didn't know they could shoot us from there. I thought we had cover here, but it was like slightly broken. Wow. What a defense by the blues. I mean, at the very least, this... so. Yellow are dead purples, and you have to remember a lot of their bodies were destroyed due to explosions and their own tanks running them over, so there's just a lot of guns and helmets with no bodies by them at all. Um, so, and same goes for the blues, too. I mean, you've got, like, all these guys here. Helmet, helmets and guns being shown, no bodies in certain places, and that basically represents where soldiers died. Um, so if you check it out here, red are dead blues, yellow are dead purples. Just judging by the number of purples still alive, I mean... I mean, there might be some wait no that wouldn't work okay if i do this control c all right so that's 50 soldiers right here i'd say that's like another 50 there and then maybe like another 100 way back here plus like some over here so maybe like 200 to 300 soldiers remaining for the purples compared to compared to their starting 1000 and the blues had like 125 to 150 soldiers something around there so the blues slaughtered the purples here slaughtered them so the purples are probably going to need to um 
attempt to regroup a little bit before their next assault. However, the bridge to the Blue Isles is now open. And that means the Purples can now hit the Blues in their home turf. I think next episode we're going to be checking out the Greens and their defense in their own home turf. But let me know what you guys think should happen for the next episode and what happens to the Blues after this. What kind of defense, what kind of strategy should we use, that kind of a thing. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And comment down below. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content. And hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.